Rajin bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Assalamu ala khatabal anbiya Rasulullah Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam Now so this is this is a topic as I have mentioned just now that we we have not covered before at all in my 15 years right I'm um, surprisingly isn't it true because there are so many things that we covered um but but the topic about happiness happiness that um is something that is quite elusive to many people right there is this well, misconception or there's this perception you call you can pull it about how i mean i'm talking about whether you're a believer or non believer there is this culture of now that we have the social media and now we can actually look into other people's worlds in it right other people's house other people's activities your holidays everywhere they go and there is this misconception for me personally that, that that's it this is this is what you're aiming for in life right um and for me personally subhanallah I'm not going to lie in a sense I come from Singapore right Singapore is a very um materialistic country it's a very rich country in which we discussed before and I have may have told you that is this um policy or should I say lifestyle that everybody is is craving for right it, it involves around about five or six C's C letter letter C right in which you should have a um career you should have car car you have to remember it's, it, it's not like the car here right in singapore cars is extremely expensive the cheapest you can find perhaps is maybe about 20 30000 pounds right to get a car you you should live in a condominium in other city and because in singapore everybody lives in like a like a council house right but to buy con- a private condominium with own swimming pool you have achieved a certain status yeah um of course you should have um um country club membership right um credit card credit card is not like here right in singapore credit cards is like you need to have a certain salary then you have a different kinds of cards you have these gold card you have this platinum card you have this black card so different status and so this is how i was brought up in right i i'm going to tell you about my my journey because everybody goes through a different journey right in life um in order to achieve this thing called well what we call it happiness which we define as a feeling of uh, joy and contentment that what we have been received in front of us that we we started to starting to enjoy and to 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 relish this time of 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 true um joy uh in life right so this is how i was brought up how um everybody was well i had to say this very materialistic and this is the illness in singapore um so that was how i brought was brought up and my journey um and you and i know that if you are brought up in that kind of an atmosphere society you will have everybody got the same or similar kind of mentality that okay we need to have this 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 to be to be happy right um so alhamdulillah right graduated um in uh, as a dental surgeon um i worked hard in office and that is where i find that hmm something is not right somewhere something is missing in my life even though that i had Alhamdulillah, this is from Allah, of course, right? There is this, there is this huge amount of money, but something else is not there, and I couldn't figure out what it is, right? And uh, but Alhamdulillah, I came from a family, as you know. Um, Alhamdulillah, both both parents were religious teachers and all this, and with the, with the, uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, we have a quite a solid um, foundation of the Deen. Alhamdulillah. among with both my ancestors all of them were teaching islam and all this so hamla i have this uh, um ability to um understand the deen hamla quran and sunnah which is quite rare in in singapore um but that that's was how our, our family were brought up so i decided to okay right N- need to go somewhere in order to find out what is the purpose of life and this is this is for me is like i started to think that 
the purpose of life, I can't be working about six or seven days a week. And as if, okay, get the money at the end of the month, go for holidays. Um, yes, went to attend the religious, religious classes, went to the mosque and all this. But that, that cannot be just my purpose of life, right? So I decided to explore the world, went to America and all this. So I wanted to move to America and then they opened up something here. So I, I had these ambitions. Of course, I, I, I'm sure those of you who were young here, who are, uh, so many of you are still young here, you have this ambition to have this, well, uh, happiness means perhaps having a house, having children, having a um, career and all this. And this, is, this makes, inshallah, your, your life here complete in this life in this world right um so i of course i had my own things right i want to do this i want to do that i want to have this house to a big house a garden all this um children all this right um then of course right came here not happy with my life here even as a, as 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 a, as a dental surgeon decided to do law so many things happen until i finally i finally find a Sit in, I was in a situation where, well, I was involved in, um, I don't know if you know this, but the Muslim World League um, organizations uh, called the um, World Association of Muslim Youth and all this. And I, alhamdulillah, I, I find that getting this, helping people and relearning the deen again and all this, make it a more contented way of life this should, that is how i put this right um and at the same time well my goal of living somewhere in nice bridge with a nice garden with children right and this is where sometimes and, and you and i know well you can have all whatever plans you have but in the end Allah is the one who will decide, right? No children, right? Um, married for more than 10 years. And, and this is how it is, right? But the big question is, right? I did not get the house that I want. I did not get the, well, career, alhamdulillah, right? But the fact that I'm doing this, talking to you in front, in front of me here, I'm sharing things with you, um, and I'm doing things, inshallah, which is, I hope that Allah will be pleased with it itself. I think for me personally, this is what I am. This is my journey from now on that I want to, to pursue in. It, it, does, it, it doesn't matter that I don't have the big house that I wanted. I do not have the children that I have, I have from Allah anyway. So, so this is how it is that you, you are... You can plan all you want to achieve happiness, but at the end of the day, right, it is Allah eventually who will plan things out for you, right, how it is, and you just have to adapt yourself to, to life, how Allah, want, Allah wanted you to be. And this is, for me personally, well, not, I, I, my colleagues in Singapore who are dentists, they were earning much, 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 much more money than I me. Mean, they have few houses and all this. But I think, I mean, at the end of the day, we need to di differentiate between transient happiness and eternal happiness, right? And you and I, we, we are all always on a journey, right, to find out what is this purpose in life? What makes me happy? Right? Even Prince Harry is wanted to be happy, isn't it? True. Prince Harry, as you know, right? Married an American, not happy here in the UK, went to America. Everybody's looking for happiness, right? And you, you see it on TVs, all this, those who won the um, lotteries, right? You think that they're very happy, right? When they won the news, uh, the, 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 the media coverage were all on them. They were, what? Popping up champagne bottles and you and I know if you do research and all this, most of them are bankrupt today. Some of them are committing suicide, right? You see the celebrity cultures, right? As I said just now, many of them are uh, seeing or having appointments with psychologists or psychiatrists in order to 
to tackle the unhappiness despite the fact that they have a lot of wealth, right? You have now with the uh, increased use of social media, you have these influencers, and with this, with, with the social media, you know, it, it's like you are living a virtual life, right? You want people to know this is how you are. You want people to perceive yourself as it is. But actually, in, a, in fact, quite a lot of them are, have a different lifestyle in, in the end, right? So this is, this is how we should um, analyze and we should discuss. What is the meaning of happiness that for you, right? in your journey in life. What would you hope to achieve? Let, let us not be, how should I put it, um, very unrealistic. Of course, if you were to put me in Gaza today, obviously as a test of Allah, but I would be very, I wouldn't be very happy. Yeah? Because of all the fact that there will be a lot of bombings and all this. <laughs> Neither would I be happy to be in a place where if Allah were to decree that I would be among those, as I said many times in my talks, right? But how people traveled for, for miles and miles and miles and miles just to um, pick or uh, to, to, to find some water to drink, right? So this, this is how it is. Everybody goes through a different journey. But whatever journeys Allah put you in or you are in a state, everybody needs to know what is your happiness, what is happy places, and you do, you do need to find this, right? Um, so if, if I were to ask, like, Brother Mansour, right, how do you define happiness? Uh, um... I don't know. I don't have to explain that, to be honest. Is it important for you to be happy? Of course. I think that's the main goal in life, isn't it? Well, that's It's important, isn't it true, right? Yeah. And happiness may not be defined by wealth, but even though if we have money, alhamdulillah, right? It helps a lot, isn't it true, right? You can support the family, you don't need to be on benefit, right? You can go to Hajj, you can do Umrah, right? But, but you do need to know, because you, everybody is on a journey, and you need to find this happiness. Right, and Islam itself has has defined defined to you and I what this happiness, right? Um, Sofian, what what do you think? Alhamdulillah, I know you 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 revert itself being a new Muslim, right? Itself, I'm sure brings a form of happiness in the first place. Isn't it true, Sofian? Yeah, I think it does. Um, can I tell you something about my own? personal discovery with yes, happiness. Yes, please. Well, yeah. as you know a little bit about my family, my father was somebody from a very politically connected sort of family back in Africa. Yes. Um, so as, as you've said yourself, growing up, that, that idea of I needed to have certain things to be complete within the society that I grew up in was deeply ingrained in me from the very beginning. Yeah. And even till now, um, sometimes those ideas still leave an imprint, right? And I think about them. But I think what Islam did for me when I discovered it, or rather when Allah led me to it, was that it gave me this understanding that it's okay for you to pursue those things, but these are the boundaries in which you can pursue those things. And if you stick to these boundaries, then you will have no regrets. And that has given me a sense of uh, completion. So even if I, I go after a, a career or a house or whatever it is, so long as I don't cross the lines of what is halal, haram and halal, I'm always very content. In, and, and I think that, that has given me a sense of peace. I don't have to question anything too much. Um, it, it's about, at the end of the day, right? It's all about submission to, to Allah. And always remember, right, brothers? Not many people are chosen by Allah to be Muslims. Let's be very clear. We have about 8 or 9 billion people in this world, right? Only one point eight or one point seven people seven billion people were Muslims. So less than half, much less than half. Right? And as it is, that should well, this is how we help each other to motivate each other. That should inshallah make us thank Allah or to be grateful to Allah 
for this huge blessing, right? And we discussed before this Islam, right? La ilaha illallah. None has a right to be worshipped by Allah. It is our passport to Jannah. And this is this is this is very fundamental. And that, inshallah, that is the eternal happiness. And I'm going to re uh, recite to you later a hadith regarding what is ex what would what would we or what would Allah give us as a form of true happiness? And honestly, and I'll be very honest with you, right? Even talking to you now, right? Even as I raise money for Indonesia, raise money, we raise money, Hamla for the Qalam for Palestine, um, yeah, reciting the Quran, I led the prayers and all this. Even then, there is this uncertainty, even though we, we yeah, of course, we make dua to Allah, right? That, um, and we are human beings, right? We make mistakes and all this. There is all this question mark, well, will Allah accept my deeds? Will Allah, and there's always this, it's this huge um, expectations, right? From Allah, right? In order that for all of us to understand what is the purpose and life, we must submit completely to Allah. And this is this is how life is all about, right? Allah said very clearly that, that I do not create jinn and make accept that they should worship me. And this is how life is, right? Before, as I said, I'm going to read for you a beautiful hadith. Arbi, all right? You, um, alhamdulillah, you are, you started to practice, alhamdulillah, um, for, for a while. And how do you, how do you define happiness? Are you happy now that, alhamdulillah, that you are practicing now? Yes. Arbi. Oh, sorry. Arbi. Are you are you online? Okay. You so happy um, to fell asleep, Chef. Sorry? Jamal. So he's, he's so happy he probably fell asleep. Jamal. Are you Jamal, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jamal, you have been a Muslim for more than 10 years? Yeah, over 10 years, alhamdulillah. Yeah. How, how, and I think I'm not, I'm not undermining the, the youngsters, of course. The older you are, I hate to say this, the more you will understand, right, about your journey in life, how you are tested on all this. How do you define happiness, uh, Jamal? Um... Yeah, I think one of the main things is having having a purpose, knowing that you have a purpose in life is, is a major, you know, it's a major um, thing in terms of being yeah. happy. But I think one of the other things that me personally makes me happy is knowing that I can contribute to, to people to make a difference. Yes. However little it may be. Yeah. I mean, even if you give a charity uh, a little, you know, couple of pounds here and there you find that you know how 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 much you feel happy after after doing that so yeah. i think having a purpose in terms of not just worship but also having a purpose in terms of being a benefit to mankind is is what happiness is about that's what i've learned personally okay does does um material wealth is important to you i mean yeah it helps obviously makes yeah. life easier but yes yeah. and it's not it's not the be all of and and or end all but i mean yeah definitely it of course it, yeah it makes life easier that's for sure i mean yeah. it's good to be financially secure especially if you have family uh to support and things like that yeah it, it, creates, a, it creates a peace of mind isn't it true yes, exactly. i mean because i hate to say this right people who are in debt that's why muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam our prophet believe prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would always not uh, tell people not to be in debt because that it, that being in debt itself it creates so much burden on you oh, I, I mean debt of thousands of pounds and all this to in debt I need to pay back and all this it's, it's quite it's quite it, it will affect your deen and all this your salah and all this sometimes right um, on 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 a quite big level to some people okay but, so, I mean being financially secure also gives you I guess the opportunity to give to people doesn't it yes. 
yes. if we have the capacity to to help financially, then that's a blessing as, as well, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Alhamdulillah. Maybe that's a good thing. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Arbi, are you here? No, oh, he's not. Abdullah, another young, young, young man, right? Assalamualaikum. Salam How, how, how do you find? You come from a big family, right? And all this, right? How, how do you, how do you find? How do you define happiness? Um, for me, happiness is uh, it's about contentment and feeling feeling comfortable with yourself, who you are, what you do. You know, accepting your accepting your shortcomings. Yes. Um, and yeah, I mean, working, working, feeling that you're working towards uh, improving yourself, and that goes in all aspects. Yes. Whether it's Dean. You know, and dunya in both in both senses, but I think yeah. the the ha the happiness that really keeps you peaceful yeah. and content is when you feel that uh, your place with Allah, even though of course you never know where you stand, but you feel that you're at least trying your best to please Allah, and that you're you know you're 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 basically in a constant state of uh, trying to please Allah while also yes. Seeking forgiveness consistently to make sure that you're clean at yes. all times. And yes. for me, for me, happiness, yeah, for me, I'd say happiness is, uh, or when I feel happy and my most happy is when I feel that I'm, uh, yeah, that I'm in a good place in, in Allah's eyes. Yeah, but I think, alhamdulillah, I think, I think that that is how, as I said just now, that, and we, we must be completely grateful to Allah, right? For having guiding all of us to Islam, and this is a huge happiness that that we we have that, that Allah has given us, right? Um, the only thing that is just you and me that we haven't died yet. So in that sense, yeah. that there must be a steadfastness of the Deen, right? Don't yeah. be don't be in a situation like Iblis, right? Who was so pious and he thinks that he was so smart, he was being elevated to high status that wow, right? Um, I think I have I have the I can choose, pick and choose which one I want to obey, which one I do not want to obey. And this is yeah, how of course, yeah. yeah. I mean you have to you have to constantly that's why you have to constantly uh assess yourself and constantly yes. round yourself as well and make sure that yes. you don't go the to the extreme and think that you know yeah. you're are definitely destined for Jannah because obviously no one knows yeah. what they're destined for. You don't know, you never yeah. know what you will die upon. So yeah. I think that's, you have to have, you have to maintain that sort of uh, fear of where you will end up and yes. uh, consciousness of, yeah. uh, you know, any, any possibility that you, you'll die in a state, uh, in a state of kufr. But yeah, happiness is when you, uh, I think for me, it's when you, uh, you feel that you're basically just doing the right thing. Yeah, and and this this kind of thing is a bit where we call it in, in in general we call it sakina, right? This is tranquility, contentment, calmness in the heart. Everything comes usually, right? I mean, I have been. I'm, I'm people who are older, especially, right? You know that you know sometimes it, no matter how much money you have, it does not bring you that kind of um, um, sakina, right? Now, let's let's look at the hadith in which in which Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us, right? about what will wait for you and I, inshallah. And this is for me, is ultimate happiness, right? Now, from Abu Said al-Khudri reported, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, Verily, Allah will say to the people of paradise, O people of paradise, and they will say, We are at your service, our Lord. All goodness is in your hand. Allah will then say, Are you satisfied? They will say, why would we not be satisfied when you have given us what you have not given to any other creation? So in a sense that they're in Jannah, they already have whatever things that they, they wish for. Why should I, why, why are we not satisfied, right? Allah will then say, shall I not give you something better than all of that? They will say, oh Lord, what could be better than that? And Allah will say, I will grant you my pleasure, such that I will never be displeased with you ever again. 
hadith from Bukhari and Muslim. And that itself is a huge thing, right? You and I know, right? No matter how perfect we try to be in Ramadan, for example, right? We will still commit, I mean, forget this, forget that. Perhaps, um, you know, uh, the mouth is a little bit uncontrolled, right? There will still be things that Allah may not be pleased with what we do because we are humans, right? We are not angels, right? But Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us one whole month of Ramadan, right? In order for us, inshallah, to be just like the angels, because like, especially the last 10 nights, isn't it true, right? In the morning, uh, in the daylight, daytime, we are fasting, right? When you're fasting, you and I know that we are in a state of, we are in a purified state. At night, especially last 10 nights of Ramadan, right? We are trying to not to sleep, right? We are always trying to worship Allah um, as best as we can. And this is how it is, right? But... But at the end of Ramadan, you and I know, right? We are still not perfect. Iman goes down, shaitans comes out from come up from the hellfire, and some of us are in a state that well, some of us are uh, um, perhaps right because this is in um, almost towards summer, right? The middle middle of the um, what do you call it summer solstice, right? In which I mean Fajr about was about two fifty eight. Right, um, each, uh, what do you call it? Maghrib is about nine, more than nine, right? Over nine, so it's a lot of time, daylight time, and therefore, um, there is what do you call it? Um, especially for those of us who are fasting, right? A lot of we face a lot of difficulties, right? In terms of um, trying to control our nerves and all this. But this, this is how, how it is in this life. Even though how much we do, there's still, we know that it's not perfect, right? We know that if, again, we know from hadith that our, our soul is between Allah's fingers. He can just flip our soul to the other side and Allah will be, maybe, uh, we may be a disbeliever tomorrow. We do not know, right? That's how we have the dua, Ya maqallib al-qulub, thabbis qalbi ala deenik, right? Oh, you changes the heart, mix my heart, make my heart firm on your deen. Now, so this is this is life, but in the in the, in the Jannah, Subhanallah, is Allah's promise that He would never, never, ever, ever be displeased with us, and that itself, for me personally, that is eternal happiness. There's something which we, because when when you lead a life of worshiping Allah. Of trying your best to please Allah, I'm sure you 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 come across situations where ah, should I do this or should I do this? And you we come come across ah, would Allah be pleased with me if I do this? Would Allah be pleased with me if I do that? If I delay my prayer, would Allah be pleased with me? And all this kind of thing is always playing in our mind. But in Jannah, no such thing. This is this is amazing for me, right? This, and this is the eternal, eternal um, happiness that we hope to achieve, right? As long as you are breathing, brothers, well, for me personally, the happiness might be there, but there's still things that we are wary about, about forgetting this, about disobeying Allah, about, you know, many, many things. But this is Jannah. It's very different, right, in which any one of us, inshallah, who wants to go to Jannah, or who hope to at the Jannah, we must not even have a single atom of impurity in our heart. Right? That is why you know from Hadith, a person with a single atom of arrogance cannot enter Jannah. Any one of us have any dispute with each other, we will be brought, remember we discussed before many times, we will be brought together on the at the gates of Jannah, we will be asked, you still want to have dispute or you want this whole palace to yourself? And we, inshallah we will forgive each other and we will hold hands. So, so this is how it, it is, right? Now, Allah warned us, right? In surah number 31, verse number 33. Surah Luqman, verse number 33. Ya ayuhanna suttaqu rabbakum wa wakhshaw yawman la yajzi walidun an walidahi wa walidihi an wa waladihi wa la mauludun huwa jazin an an walidihi shay'a inna wa'dallahi haq fala taghurrannakum alhayatu dunya wa la yaghurrannakum billahi alghurur o mankind be afraid of your lord 
and fear a day when no father can avail aught for his son, nor a son avail aught for his father. Verily, the promise of Allah is true. Then not let then do not let this worldly present life deceive you, nor let the chief deceiver shaitan deceive you about Allah. Right in another verse in Surah number fifty-seven, verse number twenty. Ya <laughs> وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور. Know that the life of this world is only play and amusement, pomp and mutual boasting among you, and revelry in respect of wealth and children, as a likeness of the vegetation or of the rain thereof of the growth is pleasing to the tiller, and afterwards it dries up, and you see it turning yellow. And then, it, and then it becomes straw. But in the hereafter, there is a severe torment, and there is forgiveness from Allah, and His good pleasure. Whereas the life of this world is only a deceiving enjoyment. And this is how Allah pictured the picture this life is. And we know from another hadith, Prophet Muhammad said, a believer always look at this life as you are, as though you are in a prison, right? Because of so much temptations, and this is it's not an eternal life that we hope for, right? And this always, 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 always tests from Allah, isn't it true, right? And this is something in which we do need to understand about Allah's test, right? You and I know that the the stronger a believer you are, the more Allah will test you, isn't it true, right? That's what Allah said, for example, in Surah number twenty-nine, verse number two and three. Um, Right? Do you think that you will not be tested just because you say you believe? And this is very important, right? In the sense that you you and I know you and I know that the ones who are tested the most are the prophets, right? The ones who are tested the most are those who are, who are, who are true believers, the Sahaba and all this, right? So the, the more you are, you want to be closer to Allah, the more you try to be closer to Allah, the more you are tested. Why is it so, brothers? Can anybody tell me? Why would Allah test the believers more than anybody else? Um, just to purify us. To enter Jannah, because obviously Jannah we can't enter with sins, isn't it? Mm. It is, it's not true. That, that's, that's one of the main reason, right? But of course, provided that we are able to be to endure this pay, uh, this, this test with patience, right? As all, and that was in Surah number two, and was number two and three, and Surah number um, number two was number two uh, one five five. Um, right, that is in Surah number um, 2, verse 155 to 157. And certainly we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth and lives and fruits, but give glad tidings to the sovereign who are these people. When they are afflicted with calamity, they say, truly to Allah we belong, and truly to him we shall return. They are those on whom are the salawat, or the blessings, um, from their Lord, and they are those who receive his mercy, and it is they who are the guided ones. Right? So this is something in which, um, well, this effect of life that the, the more we get closer to Allah, the more, of course, Allah wanted to um, remove our sins. There's no such thing as a perfect human being. We will commit sins upon sins upon sins. And this is how Allah, subhanAllah, He always informed us about His names and attributes. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Ghafar, right? Um, Al-Afu. So all of this in the Quran for all of us to understand, right? 
that he has this ability to forgive us. We know from Allah's mercy that Allah's mercy is divided into 100 parts. One part is reserved, uh, one part is in this world and 99 parts is in reserve for us, inshallah, in the hereafter, right? So this is, this is how it is, how life is, how um, as people are seeking ways to be happy, and we hope that you and I, right, when we when we seek ways to be happy, the main way that we, we want happiness is through the way that Islam has taught us, through how we submit ourselves to Allah. And you and I know, especially those of us who have been to Umrah and Hajj and all this, that is, that is the best place to go. Nothing else can beat because when you go down there, subhanAllah, to do your Umrah, or to do your Hajj especially, you will have the sensation that, well, whatever happens in the world can happen. I don't care. I'm just here. I just want to worship Allah. And this is how a lot of people feel right, when they go there. And this is a huge achievement, right? When we when we are invited by Allah to go there, we may do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will invite all of us right, to, to go to that place in order to perform Umrah and Hajj. Now, as you know, right, because of the pandemic, um, there is a lot of restrictions that make dua Allah will, will, will free the place, right, from these uh, any illnesses that we can go and uh, worship Allah as best as we can, right? Now, so this is this is how we um, we understand happiness, right? And we also must understand a lot of people are facing um, so much problems in trying to attain happiness because they are looking for happiness in the wrong places, right? in terms of, and I understand, right? You may have, as I said before, you may have, you have your dreams, you want to have this house, you want to have this career, you want to have this. And at the expense of trying to achieve that, what happened, right? Many people somehow or other have compromised Islam. Right? When I say compromise means, for example, you may, you know that this is not correct. You know that perhaps these meetings, after meetings, and after meetings, you may be missing your Friday prayers, or may, may be missing the, the Dhuhr prayer, and yet you still pursue this job that doesn't allow you to pray on time. And this is how um, some people are doing. And, and I, I know some of my students, I won't mention names of course, how um, in the midst of exams, and I ask them, Okay, exam is coming. So how's your prayers? Oh, I miss some prayers. How can it be that you're missing your prayers when you know that eventually the one who you will um, who will allow you to pass the exam is Allah? And this is how, in the pursuit of some of happiness for some people, people start to slack because you forgot what is a true happiness. Yes, um, you passing the exam, you getting the job that you want, eventually will make you happy. But that is not a true happiness that you are looking for, right? For sure, right? Because at the end of the day, yeah, all of us, like it or not, we will face Allah. We will be accountable to Allah. As Allah informed us in the last verse that was revealed, right? Be afraid of the day when you shall be brought back to Allah. Then every person shall be paid for what he has earned, and they shall not be dealt with unjustly. And this is how we are. All of us will be, we have no choice but to be answerable to Allah on a day of judgment, right? And Allah has literally swore upon, upon his name, Allahu la ilaha illahu la yajma'annakum illa yawmil qiyamati la rayba fi. In surah number 4, verse number 87. Allah. None has the right to worship but, but him. Surely, he will gather you on a day of resurrection in which there is no doubt about it. Yeah? All of us be gathered on a day of resurrection in order to answer to what we have done in this life. Okay? Now, so, an important part of happiness is what? To be contented. To be contented with whatever that Allah has given us. Right? Of sure, we have to try first, right? We have to, um, we have to put our effort, right? Uh, we have to make dua to Allah. But eventually, as I said just now, 
the ultimate decision of the outcome of the what you are trying to achieve, everything comes from Allah. And this is how we knowing the concept of Qadar of Allah, knowing the concept of that everything you need to trust Allah in your decision that itself inshallah brings a lot of contentment in your heart right because how do you know right that in the process of getting your wealth that you want and you, you and allah gave you that wealth that you wanted so much and after that and we we saw in many examples in the quran how when people were given wealth by allah right they begin to forget allah you do not know right how do you know in the process of wanting so many children and in the end the children themselves are not obedient to allah how do you know right so all these kind of things that we understand about qadar that we need to really embrace it right and we need to have this thing called tawakkul to allah right in order for us to trust in whatever decisions that allah has has given us right that is why the Quran is has ample examples of trusting Allah. Isn't it true? Right? Um, can can anybody um, give us examples of um, that you have read in the Quran about trusting Allah in terms of prophets of other people? Can anybody? Yes. Um. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly, but there is a ayah saying, So if you intend to do something, then have to walk in Allah. Yes. Basically, yeah. that's but, but I'm talking about examples of the, the prophets or people that whom we know that they trusted Allah and on that basis, Allah helped them. And they feel very contented. So, um, I think Ibrahim alayhi yes, salam. Yes, what story, happened, Ibrahim? He has multiple examples where he has to put or complete trust in Allah. So, for example, when he's told to uh, sacrifice his son, as an yes. example, and then also when he's told to leave um, the the baby and and and, and uh, I, I believe yes. and, 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 and 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 his wife in in, in the desert. Yes. So, in, in in all in all those examples, Allah tests yes. him with extreme acts of trust that yes. I don't think many of us will be able to perform as human beings. And on the basis of the of being test, tested and tested and tested and alhamdulillah he was able to pass the test and all this. What is his reward today? His name was being Heaven. mentioned all the time by us, is it true? In the, in, in the Salah. And he's also called the intimate friend of Allah, Khadil Allah, in the in, intimate friend of Allah, right? So, so these are the things in which when you, we, despite the difficulties, this difficulties that we face, we still are obedient to Allah. We still trust Allah, and that itself, to to those who understand the Deen, understand Islam, that brings a whole lot of contentment in your life. Even though you may not achieve what it is, but well, if it's from Allah, then you accept it. And this is how even the wife, as as, as his, uh, brother Sofian was saying about how Ibrahim Alaihissalam brought the the the, the son, right, Ismail, into in the middle of nowhere, right, uh, Hajjah and wife and the uh, son Ismail, right, and when he was about to leave because the wife was so shocked, why are you leaving us in the middle of nowhere? And he asked Ibrahim Alaihissalam, she asked Ibrahim Alaihissalam, why? What happened? And he didn't answer until she said, is this from Allah? Then he said, yes, it's from Allah. And she said, if this is from Allah, then I will trust Allah. And this is how it is, right? The heart of a believer, no matter how much they test, of course, I mean, how can you imagine if you are you are among one of those people who are who who would who uh, left in the middle of nowhere to fend for yourself? There's no water. Uh, to, uh, there's a bit of water for them to drink. It would it would run out quite fast, and just a little bit of food, and that's about it. There's nothing else, and this is where trusting Allah comes in, right? Other examples include, of course, the people of the cave, right? You are supposed to recite today. People in the cave, they trusted Allah. 
right? They left behind Shirik and they come back and they, and they, they, they uh, ran away, right? And Allah helped them completely, even, even in the form of a dog who, who, who if you read the tafsir, the dog, it wasn't even part of the part of them, right? It's, the dog did not belong to them. And the dog was so useful because he was the one who guarded the mouth of the cave, wasn't it true, right? And this is how it is. Allah will help a believer, provided that you will have this trust in Allah. That is why a very important word that we must have or what we must use is Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah alone is sufficient for me. He is the best disposer of all our affairs. Where did Allah say this in the Quran, brothers? Anybody knows? Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Which, which verse of the Quran? The Surah Ibrahim. No. <laughs> Yeah, Ibrahim used it, of course, but yeah, that, yeah. That, that example, because what, before he was thrown in the fire, wasn't it true, right? He said the similar thing, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. But that wasn't part of the Quran that is in, in, in the Hadith, right? But it was in Surah number 3, verse number 173, when the, uh, uh, the, the enemies of Allah were trying to scare the Muslims to, to be, be afraid of the enemies. And they just say, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. What, what can they do? Everything is from Allah. Right, and this is how they they, they trusted Allah, right? Um, so, other examples, of course, we include a Prophet Yusuf salam, right? How he was uh, um, tested by Allah, right? Going from um, uh, thrown in the well, right? Allah saved him, and then he was sold into slavery, and then he was seduced by the wife of the owner or the master, and then he went to prison, and all these things. In the end, subhanAllah, there, there is this thing that we need to understand, brothers. We call it husnul dhan. That means this, this positive opinion of Allah. And, and this is where shaitan comes in, right? Shaitan will say, look at you, right? You worship Allah, right? You are supposed to get this job. Then you think that, you know, this job is no good for you because you cannot pray. Look at you. You don't even have so much money, right? And, and you start to have doubts about Allah. You start to have this opinion that perhaps we made the wrong decision and this is how brothers that we need to really understand we need to trust allah that whatever th things that happen and we do it for the sake of allah for sure inshallah we will get the reward in the hereafter right so we have to inshallah understand what we learn in the quran about the examples that we 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 have uh, been given in the quran about all the different people about the different prophets that they, they the the test that they face and how much they trusted Allah right and this is how true happiness is is found yeah that they have this contentment in the heart even though right things are against them that they think that you know uh, that they are on a losing end but the fact that they have surrendered themselves to Allah itself right it is amazing that's why in one of the hadith in, in which we were supposed to if, if you were to say this, right, we feel this contentment in the heart. What is this? Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami dina wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi salam nabiya. What does it mean? You, if, you, if you read this as part of your morning and evening adhkar, right? Raditu billahi rabba. I'm pleased that Allah is my Lord, my Rabb, wa bil islam And I'm pleased that, that Islam is uh, my way of life. And I'm pleased that Muhammad Sallallahu is my uh, prophet, right? And if you were to say this, you will be contented, especially in the hereafter, right? So very important things that we do need to, to assure ourselves, because shaitan is always putting doubts in ourselves, in our decisions, okay? Now, um, so again, that, that thing that I said, the hadith about Radhi Tubullahi Rabbah, right? Uh, from Sahih Muslim, Prophet Muhammad Sallam said, He has tasted the sweetest sweetness of faith, who is content with Allah as his Lord, Islam as his deen, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as his prophet. Right? Ibn Taymiyyah said about contentment, Contentment is the greatest door that one enters to Allah. It is a source of tranquility for the worshipper and paradise on earth. Whoever does not enter it will not enter the paradise in the hereafter. And this is a contentment. That means whatever things that befalls upon us, yes, of course, we tie the camel, we ensure that 
we um, we do our best, right, in order to overcome the difficulties. But at the same time, whatever happens that it, we, we did not perhaps achieve our goal, our dream, right? And this is from Allah. We just need to accept it and can continue with our life, right? And be calm about it, subhanAllah, okay? Um, so this is, this is how when, when you trust Allah as the best of planner, right? Then you will know how to be contented, right? In terms of having children, in terms of the, the career that you have, in terms of the house that you have, in terms of the decision, decisions that you make and all this, everything is about trusting Allah, inshallah, okay? Now, um, how to achieve eternal happiness and contentment? Of course, right? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said that there is no Muslim servant who says in the morning and evening, as I said just now, Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islam dina wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyya, right? Except that it will be a right upon Allah to make him content on the day of judgment. How important is this? That, so we need to learn this. Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islam dina wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyya, right? Then subhanallah, this hadith of Imam Ahmed, right? That, that So this when you say this, there is a right, it will be a right upon Allah to make us, inshallah, contented. Contented means what? Hellfire? No, of course not, right? Inshallah, to be in Jannah. Okay? Um, now, another thing to be happy right is of course to do your good righteous deeds right in surah number 16 verse number 97 in the meaning right allah said in the meaning where whoever works righteousness whether male or female while he or she is a true believer verily to him we will give a good life in this world right in terms of what in terms of contentment in terms of lawful provisions and we shall pay them certainly a reward in proportion to the best of what they used to do, right? Ibn Tamiya said the origins of happiness are based on three things. Okay, listen to this, right? Ibn Tamiya said, Rahimullah said, the origins of happiness are based upon three things and each of them has an opposite and whoever lost one of these will get its opposite. So whoever lost one of these get the opposite. What are these, right? First of all is... Um, monotheism and its opposite polytheism. Sunnah and its opposite which is innovation and obedience and disobedience. All these have three have one opposite which is a heart that fails to seek Allah and the pleasure he promises and fails to fear Allah and the punishments he promises for the wrongdoers. Right? So this is, this is how in a sense that we we strive for this. Yeah, we, that's how we have these classes and you have your other friends and choose your friends properly in order to be to remind each other, right? About how to achieve true happiness in this life, inshallah. Okay. Now, um, understanding of the next one is understanding of the objective in life. If we understand what is the purpose of life, inshallah, we will be content in this. Isn't it true? Right? The purpose of life, if you read a lot, uh, just Google purpose of life. A lot of people have different di different um, narrations of what is purpose of life, right? Um, if talk talk of disbelievers, perhaps the purpose of life perhaps is, is to make more money, to be famous, right? To be like a celebrity. And if you if you if you sometimes people go to all these uh, plastic surgeons to make themselves more beautiful and all. And this is for them. There is a purpose of life to make to make it known that they are the most beautiful person on the face of the earth, right? Now, Allah has set a standard for all of us. What is our purpose of life? In Surah Al-Mulk, in verse number um, two, Allah di khalaq al-mawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyikum ahsanu amala. Right? He has uh, made death and life that he may test us which one, of, uh, which one of us are best in deeds. And this is how it is, right? We... We strive to do the good righteous deeds, inshallah, in order to uh, uh, please Allah. And the true reward itself, we know it is from Allah. 
perhaps then this is where the human beings that we we always want the reward to be in, in on this world is it true so for example if you work at the end of the month we know that subhanallah that is alhamdulillah there's a salary at the end of the month we want this but sometimes the reward from allah will be only be given in the hereafter not in this life right so when, when we strive hard in this life for sure inshallah provided that it is not corrupted provided provided that it is the deeds that we do are uh, accepted by Allah, you will find a reward, inshallah, in the hereafter. Okay? Now, the next one is, of course, to refine the heart. And this is one of the true, um, true ways to achieve happiness. To, to clean the heart out of any form of uh, impurities that may ruin our chance of getting Allah's guidance. Now, you and I know, for example, we talk about many times how when we do any sin, what happened? There's a dot that will cover the black dot on the heart and it gets bigger and bigger if you do not ask Allah for forgiveness. Isn't it true? Right? We discussed many times about this, right? But purification of the heart is so important because with this, right, it helps our heart to be able to receive Allah's guidance. And when we receive Allah's guidance, right, we find again contentment, tawakkul to Allah, we trust Allah, right? And all this comes hand in hand when, when our heart is clean. But when our heart is not clean, subhanAllah, right, with all these um, uh, sins that we have made in all this, and we, we, we fail to, to clean the hearts by asking Allah for forgiveness, subhanAllah, then the Allah's guidance, Allah's lights do not come in our heart, okay? Um, Ibn Qayyim said, whoever abandons habits for the sake of someone or something other than Allah will surely suffer hard and difficult times. However, whoever abandons habits for the sake of Allah sincerely from his heart, he will not suffer. He will, uh, he will not suffer from leaving it except at the beginning so that his credibility will be examined. If he bears this plane it will be turned into pleasure, sorry, if, if he bears this pain, it will turn into pleasure and satisfaction within the heart, its strength, activity, and happiness, and contentment, right? So that means if, that we, if we want to abandon any deeds, make sure you do it for the sake of Allah. Not because you are not able to do that certain, uh, abandon certain sins, right? That you, you are not able to do it because, well, there's no opportunity to do the sins, right? Um, but you do it for the sake of Allah, right? And only when you do that, subhanAllah, then you will get this contentment in the heart, inshaAllah, right? The next one, don't compare with others, all right? Why do I say this? Because, okay, this is from different cultures, right? Um, especially, that's why I, I hate, sorry to say this, not I hate, I do not like to live in Singapore because everybody is, con everybody is comparing you to others. Oh, look at these people. He's supposed to be a doctor. He's supposed to be a dentist. He's supposed to be a lawyer. Look at how what houses he has. And it's all about comparison, comparing yourself to others. And this is how, how human beings are. In your own culture, for example, right? If your cousin have this, you also must have this, right? If your neighbor have this, you also must have this. And this is how you, people compare things. But don't compare because everybody is given different provisions from Allah. Isn't it true, right? Um, so avoid comparisons. Yeah, Allah said in the Quran in Surah number 20, verse number 131, right? 20, verse number 131, because of time constraint, I just read for the meaning. Do not strain your eyes in longing for the things that we have given to some groups of them to enjoy the splendor of the life of this world through which we test them. The provisions of your Lord is better and more lasting. You have to know that they are judgment brothers. brothers. Um, the more wealth we have, the more we are accountable on the day of judgment. Two people in the authentic hadith right, have the, may have the same deeds. But one is rich and one is poor. The poor person will enter Jannah 40 years earlier than the one who is rich on the basis of accountability, right? So, yes, of course, we discussed so many times just now, right? It is, it is good and comfortable, inshallah, that we have some, some risk from Allah. But at the same time, we need to understand, right, how some of this risk might even be causing you and I to, to want more things, right? And, and a lot of people have this concept that I want this, I want that. We should have, okay, the things that you only need, right? Instead of you want it just because that you can afford it. And this is how we, when Allah gave us a lot of wealth, 
a lot we, we want more wealth and this is how it is in many examples in the quran how in the, in the examples of um surah al-kaf is neutral right when allah gave this um what do you call it um one person was have had all these gardens the other person was not have any wealth at all the one who was who forgot allah was actually the one who has the gardens the one that, that did not allah did not give any provisions he was the one who remembered allah and this is how we we always strive to to be contented with what allah has given us right? perhaps and Allah knew, subhanAllah, that if Allah were to give us more provisions, we would forget Allah, as I said just now. Okay. Um, Sofian? Um, there's a story that comes to mind that I heard when I was in Nigeria. Yes. Uh, about a, a particular gentleman um, that, that I wanted to meet for work. Um, in the end, I never got to meet him, but the story is interesting because he is one of Nigeria's wealthiest people. And um, there's something that he did in the 70s with his wealth. And that, that for me, has made him a, a great inspiration for me because of what he did with it. Mm -hmm. So in the 70s, um, Guinness was trying to, the beer, the beer brand was trying to establish roots in the north of Nigeria, where it's predominantly Muslim. And because of the Muslim population, they were struggling to, 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 to set up uh, because they had built their factory and nothing was working. People weren't buying the product. So they approached the wealthiest people in Nigeria at the time and asked them to make an investment. Most of the, the other Muslims just, because most of them, they're very wealthy, but they're Muslim. They, they didn't bother. They just ignored them. But this one man went to the meeting, uh, agreed to invest and bought up everything, the factories and everything. And then he shut them down and chased them out of the north and told them that, Guinness, that, there's, that you're never going to brew alcohol in the north. And that was nearly 50 years ago. Until this day, Guinness has not had a foothold in the north of Nigeria. Uh, okay. right? Right. And to me, the man is an inspiration because despite having all of this wealth, when, when, when it was time for him to do the right thing, it, he didn't hesitate. And he spent $7 million back in the 70s. I don't know what that is worth today, but it's a lot of money. It's a lot and of money. Did it. and, and when you think about the fact that how many generations has he benefited through that one course of action, it, it can't be undermined. You know? and, 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 and he has everything you can think of. He has planes, he has multiple houses, Rolls Royces, whatever it is. But in a moment of, in an instant when he's needed, the wisdom was there for him to just act. And I, I, I can't stress enough. I, and I think that comes from, um, as you said, keeping yourself always certain of what the right path is. Yes. So that when, 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 when the time is there for you to act, you have that full gun in you to, to do what is right. Yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Or any more comments? Okay, let's let's finish off this. Okay, um, now the next one is about reading the Quran with understanding, and this is I I mean personally I don't understand how people can read the Quran and read and read and read and you don't understand a single thing that you read. And for you, uh, Alhamdulillah, I feel so happy and I have a lot of sakina. The you, the job is half done, right? Because without understanding the Quran, how do we know what lessons to learn from the Quran? How do you know how to uh, um, get this, um, what do you call it, prevent yourself from um, disobeying Allah? How do you know uh, what are Allah's punishments? How do you know what is Allah's, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, rewards and all this? So these are the things that we do need to understand, right? That the Quran itself, right? Um, it is important for all of us to to really understand so that we are able to to know what is a message that is being brought to us. Allah said in many verses of the Quran how we, Allah do not wish for you and I to be like the Jews, right? Allah referred to them, to them as donkeys, isn't it true? Right? In the sense that they 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 have this on the Torah on important, but it's the donkey when they carry the books, right? They do not know the importance of the books, it's just what they carry. Yeah, you know, on on the uh, what they call it on the body, right? And a lot of people are like this. They have we have such important book, the Quran for all of us to try, inshallah, and get guidance. And yet we don't attempt to um, understand. Let alone we use the word tadabur. Tadabur means to ponder over the verses. We discussed many times about this issue, right? Um, because if you understand about the believer, all of us, inshallah. We want to be a mu'min, isn't it true? Right? What is the what is the difference between the Muslim and the mu'min?
Anybody? Okay, what are, what are, what are the three levels of belief? We have a Muslim, we have a Mu'min, and we have a... Muhsin. Muhsin. Is it true? Islam, Iman, and uh, Ihsan. Right? So Islam is as it is, right? Complete submission uh, to Allah and all this, right? And Iman is? Faith. As in? It's not just the actions, isn't it true, right? Is that you have this deep understanding, right? About the articles of faith, right? And you put into actions, right? That means uh, Iman is the, uh, your aqidah, your belief, or the six uh, uh, articles of faith. At the same time, you put it into actions, right? Because it, you can't say that person have all these beliefs and yet they do not even pray or they do not uh, help others. You can't have to say they have a high Iman because that it does is contradicts to what what it is, right? And Allah informed us, for example, in Surah number 8, right? In verse number 2, we discussed it so many times. If you want to be called yourself as a mu'min, right? There is a certain criteria that you need to fulfill, right? Surah number 8, verse number 2, right? Allah described who are the believers, right? Idha. The believers are only those when Allah is mentioned, they, they feel a fear in the hearts. Are we among those, right? When when we listened to the Quran, right? When somebody mentioned the word Allah to us, how do we feel? Is this just another name? Or do we feel this huge responsibility of, uh, or reminding yourself, oh, I haven't done this, I haven't done that, and all this. Where do we stand, right? In the next in the next part of the same verse, wa idatuliyas alahim ayatuhu zadat sum imana. Yeah, and when the verses his verses are recited to them, that means the Quran, they feel they increase their faith, right? So if you do not understand the Quran, it for sure it cannot increase your faith. When you understand the Quran, what is Allah trying to tell us? And you, what you are, what you are supposed to achieve, your reward, yet the incentives that Allah has provided for us, for sure, inshallah, increase our faith, right? Wa ala rabbihim yatawakkal, and this is where we talked about just now about tawakkul, right? That you to Allah, right? They put their trust. The next one, al ladina yuqimu nasala wa wa mimma razaqna hum yunfiqun right that they perform a salah fulfilling all the criteria of salah for sure on time and all this and they spend out of what we have provided for them three things right they are those who are the believers in truth for them are the grace of dignity with the lord forgiveness and a generous provision which is jannah we make dua that we are we are among these people, yeah. Um, let me see. Okay. Um, Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Um, can I just ask a quick question on um, what yes. you just said? You now, um, did you mean that um the mu'min yeah today are these all the criteria here yeah, like um the faith they practicing and um understanding the the quran that you know that he obviously like increased their faith when they heard the quran are these all like the criteria of a mu'min yes because it is it is this what allah said in the quran is intro a, a criteria that means you need to fulfill these five and um, there are other criteria of course or this is, it is one of the main ones right um that if because you and i know right um and i for me it's like whenever people have this um Quranic competitions, for example, right? I mean, it's, it's just about people beautifying their voices, for example, right? But don't even, they don't even understand the meaning, firstly. And secondly, it doesn't even increase their faith. It's all about admiring the beautiful voice, right? And this is, we have to, we have to be very careful with this. The Quran is, it functions of the Quran is to guide us, right? To increase our faith, inshallah, right? It is not something that, um, to be displayed, oh, this Quran is in the museum, right? It is how many years old? Uh, you know, the, it, it was one of, one of the copies that is found. There's no copy, and it's not the function of the Quran, 
right? It is always to be, to have this in your heart, to be, to have this ability to understand what you're supposed to do in this life, right? It is literally the dictionary that we need to survive in this life, isn't it true, right? To, in order for you and I to enter Jannah, right? When Allah mentioned about punishments, we feel, oh, am I going to get this punished? You, do you, you have to understand, for example, Abu Bakr of the Anhu, right? He is that kind of person that if there is an announcement that one person is not going to make it into Jannah, he would be the one who thinks that he's that person. So we have to have this mentality to, to always underestimate, underestimate our achievements in terms of worshipping Allah. Right? Don't be like Iblis who are so arrogant, I've done this, I've done that, I've done that, and therefore when Allah asks me to do this, no. I do, I do not wish to uh, prostrate to uh, Adam salam. And this is how people are, right? The more knowledge we have, right? The more we are fearful of our deeds. Would Allah going to accept my deeds, right? The more we will scrutinize our deeds, the more we will correct ourselves. It is those people with completely no knowledge. You, and you and I know, right? There are the people like this. They just memorize one hadith, two hadith, and they think they're the shuyukh, they give fatwa and all these kind of things, right? And they think that they are, they are among the best people, right? If the Sahaba themselves, they were so full of tears when it comes to um, matters of the deen, right? And when they pray, as you know, even, for example, Umar ibn Khattab, anhu, he has this, this channel at the eyes, right? Because he used to cry. Abu Bakr, anhu, the iman of him is, is even greater than the whole of humanity, right? And yet, he was always crying, even when, when he was leading the prayer towards the end of Prophet Sallallahu life. He was so crying so much, he was so soft that even his, his daughter, Aisha and, uh, 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 and her, he was asking Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, can you please replace him, right? Because he's, uh, you cannot hear him because he wants something to be that, that, that to be heard. And because he was so so soft-spoken and he, he was so in tears, he was so fearful of Allah, right? What about you and I, right? And this is how we, we do need to really under, truly understand, right? If the Quran do not move any one of us, that means in any part of the Quran, it doesn't affect us in the heart, something must be wrong with our Iman. It's not like a storybook you read and read and read and read and hope to complete and that's it, finish, put one side. You and I know the Quran affects us in many different ways. If we have this problem, sometimes it will come out, Allah may, may, may find a solution for you. If you have that problem, sometimes you open the book, oh, this is what Allah's, uh, Allah is uh, uh, answering us. So this is how it is, right? In order to be a mu'min, it is, it is a different level than the Muslim. And when we do our, we are among this. But and what, what about muhsin? What is the criteria of muhsin? What is ihsan? Is it doing good? What? Is it you worship you worship Allah as if He's uh, in front of you? And uh, and everything you do is to please Allah. No, the first, first part was correct. You, you worship Allah as if you see Him, but if you cannot do this, cannot perform this, know that He always looks, uh, is seeing over you. Right? This is Ihsan. And, and that means literally, I mean, this is the highest level, isn't it? It means literally any things that you do, you uh, immediately you think about Allah. And this is the highest form of taqwa, of course, right? That you fear Allah at all times. Okay? Um, so, Last one, right? It's occupying ourselves with knowledge. And this is how when we have knowledge, you will, fi you will find that, you know, alhamdulillah, you find a lot of contentment. You understand what is Allah trying to, even you do not achieve whatever things that you want, right, in life, you are still contented. You are still are grateful to Allah. At least, alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim. At least, alhamdulillah, I'm still alive. I'm able to uh, uh, repent to Allah. I'm able to pray. I'm able to prostrate to Him. And this is this is how it is when you are um, seeking have, have this knowledge, right? So continue, inshallah, to seek knowledge until our last breath. And it's very important for all of us to continue to um, be able to uh, improve ourselves in terms of our knowledge and the deen, inshallah. Okay.
Um, so this is it. So I, I hope that today's talk um, is able to, inshallah, help us to analyze our life individually, right? Brothers, only you yourself are able to analyze all yourself. Am I happy today? Am I happy because I just got a raise? Or is it because that I've just did my tahajjud? Am I happy because um, I, uh, I, because I have a nice house, I have a, you know, a nice car? Or is it I'm happy because I have done my, completed my six days of fasting in Shawwal, for example? And this is very important for you to analyze yourself because on the day of judgment, nobody is there to defend you, right? You yourself have to defend yourself, right? And we make do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to um, improve our sense of contentment with whatever Allah has given us. And make do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to allow all of us yeah, to have to trust Him in whatever decisions that He has made for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, continue to help our brothers who are suffering right, in Palestine, in Syria, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in all parts of the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, accept our deeds in the month of Ramadan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us Jannatul Firdaus. Jazakumullah khair, subhanahu wa ta'ala, shudu ala ala anta, wa sakshuka wa tu bilak, subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzata ma yasifun, wa salamu ala al-mursalin, wa alhamdulillah alamin, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair, inshallah, we'll see you for tomorrow's talk. Okay? Jazakumullah khair, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair, assalamu alaikum.